Hi, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we are going to look at rational exponents and square root functions. We're really going to concentrate on the rational exponents today. So before we do that, let's review simplifying radicals. So I want you to stop the video here and work these out, and then we can check our answers. Um, so the answer to this one, you're going to take the square root of 32 and break it down into 16 times 2, so that's going to be 4 square root 2. Okay, you can combine these to a negative 4, radical 5. You can combine these once this one's simplified. This is going to be the square root of 8 is 2 root 2, but then you're going to multiply that by 3, so it's 6 root 2 plus 4 root 2, which is 10 root 2. So that's that third one. Okay, this one, um, adding, I think that, no, or is that subtract? No, multiplying. Those you do outside to outside, so you get 6 root 18, but we know the square root of 18 breaks down to 9 times 2, and 9 is perfect square, so it's going to be 18 root 2. And this one, we're dividing, so the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 3, we have to rationalize that. So let's multiply the top and bottom by root 3, and that gives us 3 in the numerator, in the denominator, and then a root 6 in the numerator, and that's simplified. And this one, we have 12 divided, uh, square root of 12 divided by the square root of 3. That just is the square root of 4 or 2. That simplifies nicely. So you need to know how to simplify radicals. Okay, now let's look at the actual lesson. So today we're going to talk about how to rewrite terms from a radical form to a rational, and rational just is another fancy word for fraction. So a fractional exponent or a rational exponent. So if you have the b root of x all raised to the a power, you basically just take this b, move it around to the bottom of the a and it becomes a rational exponent of x to the a over b where b is your root and a is the exponent or the power that you're raising that value to okay so let's look at a couple quick examples let's look at x to the one half well if we bring this two back over here that becomes the square root of x, and we just write it as square root of x. We don't write the 2 there. We assume we know that 2. And if you have the rational exponent of 2 thirds, x to the 2 thirds, again, we move the 3 over, and it becomes the cube root of x squared. Now, there are two ways to write this. You can write the cube root of x quantity squared, or you can write the cube root of x squared on the inside. Either one of those is fine. Now, let's look at a couple of rewriting problems. So now let's just rewrite this. We have the cube root of 5 all to the fourth. If we want to write that as a rational exponent, as a fractional exponent, we're just going to, going to write that as 5 to the 4 thirds. And 10, the square root of 10 cubed becomes 10 to the 2 thirds, because if you remember, the square root is just a 2, just an assumed 2. Okay, so now let's do it the opposite way. Now let's take these radicals and write them back as rational exponents. So we have negative 5 quantity to the 7 thirds. And I had to put parentheses around that because I'm taking the square root or the cube root of negative 5. Um, and it, the negative is inside the radical, so I have to account for that. And then this one is 6 to the 9 halves. So that's how you rewrite both of those. Okay, so let's, let's let you guys practice these. So practice, stop the video, rewrite those, and we'll check them. Okay, this one should be the square root of 9 all to the 5th power. And this one is just the cube root of x. Okay, again, these are for you to practice, so stop your video. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to rewrite these. This is going to be the cube root, and that negative is under the radical, 
of negative 31, all quantity to the fifth power. Now, how is that different than this one? Notice there's no parentheses. So I'm going to take a negative square root of 16 to the seventh power. So that negative is on the outside. So look carefully. When it's inside the parentheses, it's in the radical. When it's not, it's basically saying negative 1 times 16 to the 7 halves. So that negative 1 is on the outside. Okay, let's look at the next topic. Okay, now we're going to simplify without a calculator. So let's think about our exponent rules. If we're multiplying like bases, what do we do with the exponents? Well, when we multiply like bases, we add exponents. So we have 2 to the 1 fourth times 2 to the 1 third. Okay, I'm going to need a little workspace here because I know I have to add those. So I have to get a common denominator. So I'm going to get 12 as my common denominator. Whoops, that's 2 to the 12. So 1 fourth becomes 3 twelfths and 1 third becomes 4 twelfths. So when I'm multiplying these like bases, I'm going to add the exponents. So it's going to be 12 or 2, excuse me, to the 7 twelfths. And that's how you simplify that first one. Okay, let's look at the second one. We have 5 to the 1 third times 2 to the 1 third. Well, when we have like exponents, we can write those as cube roots. So we have the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 2. Well, since they're under the same root, we can just combine those to be the cube root of 10, which is 10 to the 1 third. So you can multiply the, if your exponents are the same, then you can multiply the bases. Okay, what if we have, well, this one you can actually do two different ways. Because they have the same exponent, we can multiply those together and get 8 to the 1 third. But that simplifies to just a very simple answer of 2 because that's asking us to find the cube root of 8. Okay, and now we're going to have like bases and we're dividing. Well, when we divide, we're going to have to subtract the exponents. So we're going to have x to the 1 fourth minus 1 half. Well, that's x to the negative 1 fourth. Well, we don't want to leave that as a, neg as a negative exponent. So that's going to be x uh, to the 1 fourth all in the denominator. Okay, now something fancy about that. We cannot leave a root in the denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply this to get a whole number. And have, so I'm going to add my exponents. So I'm going to have to multiply the denominator by x to the 3 halves, x to the 3 halves. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to get x to the 4 fourths in the denominator or 1. I need a whole exponent, um, a whole number exponent in an integer in my exponent. I can't leave it as a fraction. And so I end up with x to the 3 fourths over x to the first, and that's how you have to leave it so you don't have a, a rational exponent in the denominator. Okay, now let's look at simplifying some of the radicals without a calculator. So I'm taking the cube root of negative 27, and then I'm going to square that. So the cube root of negative 27 is going to give me negative 3, but then negative 3 squared is going to give me 9. So here's another one similar to that. This I'm going to rewrite as the cube root of negative 8 quantity to the fifth. Well, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2, and negative 2 to the fifth power is negative 32. Okay, so hopefully you're beginning to see how to simplify these. Okay, and then the last one, I have 1, uh, 1 over 81 to the 1 fourth. Whoops, 80, that's 81. I'm going to write this a little bit larger for you. Okay, so now I have a fraction, and I'm taking the fourth root of a fraction. Basically, I can just take the fourth root of the numerator and the fourth root of the denominator. So 1 to the 1 fourth and 81 to the 1 fourth will simplify to 1 third because this is asking me to find the fourth root of 81 
And to simplify that, I, I always do a factor tree. So nine times nine, and then that's three times three times three times three. So I have four threes, so that just becomes a three. So that's how I do my fourth roots, cube roots, and then it's one over that, okay? And then the last one is, it's 16, 80 firsts, all to the three fourths. So again, I'm gonna take that exponent, I'm gonna make the 16 to the three fourths, all over 81 to the three fourths. So that's to asking me to find the fourth root of 16 and then cube it. So the fourth root of 16 is two, and then two cubed is eight. Then I'm gonna do the same thing in the denominator. What is the fourth root of 81? Well, the fourth root of 81, we just did that a second ago. We know that's three, and three cubed is 27. So it ends up being, whoops, eight 27 so there's a quick little um, lesson on radicals and rationals. So if you need to go back, rewatch any of those, there was one tricky one, the one with the X's that ended up being X to the 3 fourths over X to the first. If um, you need more practice on that, you can Google it or you can ask Miss B for more help. Have a great day.